Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. Milking specialist Padre O'Connor joins us this week to provide proactive steps to promote low cell count in early lactation by identifying and managing problem cows. The cows are after after being dry for a period now and they're starting to calve. And I suppose, you know, you want to get a sort of a baseline in, in terms of where their SCC is uh, at the minute. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's important to, you know, it's a new year, it's a new start. So it's, it's, it's getting a baseline in terms of, you know, um, at the mastitis levels or the SCC levels in the herd. I suppose the other thing is that, you know, by doing a milk recording early, uh, you know, you'll actually, you know, get an individual SCC for each cow recorded in the herd as well. And I suppose that will throw up maybe if, if there's problem cows there <clears throat> in terms of if they're high SEC, they have to be dealt with, you know. And I suppose the last point is, you know, you can actually assess, you know, how your dry cow period went by getting that uh, milk recording done early. Uh, and I suppose we're talking about within 60 days of, of, of the first cow calving. And, and look at those um, high cell count cows in early lactation. You know, you, you can see it from your milk recording. Um, you know, you have your herd SCC and the individual. How are you uh, going to manage those cows in early lactation? You know, there's two elements here. One is when you have a cow with high SCC, you know, she's going to elevate your bull tank. And I suppose the second part, which is really the most important part, is that if you don't do anything with these high SCC cows, they're actually going to infect other cows in the herd. So in other words, if you milk a cow that has a high SCC, and if you don't do anything with that cluster before you put it onto the next cow, the next six or seven cows, you know, after that, milking that infected cow is going to be, is actually going to be in you'll actually infect those cows. Do you know what I mean? So the impact it, it has is, is, is really serious. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose, you know, what can you do with them? Really, I suppose, if it's practical, you know, try to milk them last, you know, so as there's no cross infection there. Now, sometimes that's not always possible. So you might maybe go down the route of maybe dipping, dipping clusters after actually milking that high SEC cow. And I suppose the other thing is that it's important, I suppose, at, at, at this stage as well, you know, that we take sterile milk samples from those particular cows because we want to find out, you know, what type of bacteria is causing the mastitis. And also we want to find out, you know, what's the best type of antibiotic tube that we can use to treat that particular cow. And I would say, you know, when you get those, those results back, you know, I think it's important to have a discussion with your vet as well in terms of, you know, the vet knows the history of your farm, you know, to, to get a good, you know, to, the, the vet will have a good handle on, you know, maybe what's the best tube and the best antibiotic, you know, for your particular herd. And I suppose, you know, the other thing we, we, we need to be conscious of is maybe, you know, identifying doing a CMT, our California mastitis test, to identify, you know, what particular quarter in that particular cow is causing the, is causing the, uh, the, um, the problem. I suppose, Podrick, to, to take a jump back, um, you know, identifying those individuals that are elevating the bull tank or, you know, have a high cell count, where are you going to find that information? Uh, by doing that milk recording, I suppose the first uh, report that I will actually look at, Emma Louise, is what is called the cell check farm summary report, the cell, the cell check report. And I suppose there's four sections to that report, really. The first section is, you know, it gives you the, the, the herd average uh, uh, the, of, of, of the current test. Uh, I suppose the next part then is, um, uh, is, is the, the, you know, the mastitis levels during the lactation. You know, and I suppose in other words, so, you know, what has happened since the last milk recording? How many cows have got infected? You know, the level of, you know, persistent cows in the herd. That's by persistent cows, we mean cows that were over 200,000 for, lacta- for, for two lactations, or sorry, for two, for two milk recordings. Um, and I suppose the last part the, the, in that particular report is, you know, the... Um, uh, you know how assessing how the the um, assessing how the the dry cow period went as well, which is really really important. And there's massive variation in cell count across herds, and you know it's it's not uh, necessarily a good thing to look at the average 
and and rank yourself there. But, you know, what sort of a, a position would you say farmers are, you know, good in terms of managing cell count and having low incidence of mastitis? Is there a number that you could look at? Yeah, well, in, in the cell check report, actually, you know, the target that, that that the set there is is two hundred thousand cells per mills, uh, you know. But my my target really would be I'd be I'd be I'd be going down to maybe a hundred a hundred thousand cells per mill, uh, you know, because I think two hundred maybe is just a tad high. So so in other words, you know, I was looking at at reports there recently, and you know the farmer you know had a had a fairly good uh, SCC level. Uh, it was one hundred and fifty thousand, you know. But when I looked under the bonnet or when I fleshed out. You know, there was a number of things happening there, a number of cows there that were actually high enough, you know, that, that maybe that should have been, uh, you know, they should, uh, it's, something should have been done with them. They should have been culled or certainly uh, maybe a quarter dried off or something like that. You know, so it's really important, you know, the average can, can, can camouflage maybe a lot, maybe sometimes a lot what's going on in, 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 in underneath the bonnet. Do you know what I mean? So it's important to flesh it out and, and look at these reports. And I suppose act on these reports, Emma Louise, as well. And, and, and I interrupted you, uh, Padraig, but you talked about the first report you're looking at is the farm summary cell check report. What's next? I suppose the next one then is, is the problem cow report, um, you know, and that identifies cows that are over 200,000. Um, you know, and, and, you know, so, so, so these are the cows that, you know, the farmer has to has to has to act on. Uh, otherwise, you know, mastitis is going to is going to uh, run riot in, in the herd if these cows aren't, you know, they are, they're identified. So the farmer has to do something with them. You know, the farmer has to has to put an action plan in place. I think the the problem cow report is really interesting. As you say, you know, a, a farmer can have a cell count of 150, which looks really good. But there can be uh, cows in the herd that have, you know, tipped over the million in terms of cell count and even higher and you know can be adding 20 percent to the cell count um in terms of the overall bulk sample so uh, hugely valuable reports another point that you mentioned uh Podrick, is the cmt test um that you know farmers can use uh, to identify a high quarter and and also i'm hearing more and more from farmers that they use it on every cow before they return to the bulk tank in early lactation. Could you give us a description uh, briefly as to how you would use the CMT paddle to identify a high quarter or identify whether a cow has overall um, higher low cell count? Yes, Emma Louise, I think that's a very good point. And, and yeah, uh, there was a good number of farmers actually, you know, doing what, you're, what, what, what you have suggested is, you know, before after calving, maybe four days after calving, three to four days after calving, the cows are actually CMT tested before they move into the into into the main herd. And I suppose maybe just to go through the detail, I suppose the first part is, you know, when you want to do it, uh, cleanliness is very, very important. So discard the first three to four squirts of four milk from each quarter, first of all. So that's the first thing. Then you have your paddle with four basins and squirt some milk. Uh, from each quarter into a different well on the CMT test tray. Now, you know, there's a little line on the on the uh, on each of the basins, and that line is an indication of the volume of milk that you need in each of the in each of the um, in each of the basins. So, if you tilt the tray a little bit, so as you know, so as you know, just to reach the, the proper volume in each basin. Um, <clears throat> after that, then you add an equal amount of of test reagent. Uh, to each well, you swirl the trade in for 10 seconds and you're examining the degree of thickening in each well within 20 seconds. So it's really the, the degree of thickening or gelling is an indication of the level of subclinical mastitis in the herd. So really, you know, the, 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 the reason for doing the CMT test is that you're actually, you're trying to, um, 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 you're trying to suss out, you know, has the cow subclinical mastitis, which is mastitis that you can't see, to the, it's not visible to the eye. Can you see the, the, the mastitis 
is there mastitis in any of in any of the four quarters? And sometimes it could be maybe one quarter or two quarters. Generally, one quarter. You know what I mean? And that could be elevating that cow's cell count. And and I and an interesting point um, that I read in in this week's uh, or this month's dairy newsletter uh, from Chagas was, you know, sometimes if the four quarters are high, it is a sign of stress in a cow, which is quite normal post calving. But as you say, you know, generally it's one quarter that you'll see and that is um, potentially um, you know a problem that is is going to lead to a rise in the bulk sample um, the bulk tank um, so like beyond treating and managing those high cows that you would have spoken about um, you know there's cows that have had high cell count in that early milk recording but we're also seeing that they've they've had high cell count last year and maybe the year before um you know is there a consideration for high cell count cows in early lactation to be culled or is that something that people should look at towards the end of the lactation absolutely i think it's they should it should be looked at now emma louise um so so i suppose my line of this would be if a cow was high in the last lactation for a number of tests and she has gone through a dry cow period. In other words, she has gone through, she has got her dry cow juice because she has an, the reason that she's, um, uh, you have to give her antibiotics is because she has infection up in, in, in her elder. Um, so she has gone through um, a dry cow period. She has calved down again and she's high again at the start of the lactation. So for me, that particular cow, you know, um, um, it, it is definitely, f- f- should be on the calling list. I suppose, where I'd make an exception there would be is it, if you had young cows, maybe a heifer, you know, so this is her first lactation and she had a high quarter, you know, I'd be prepared to, you know, to, um, you know, to, to, uh, 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 I'd be prepared to, um, you know, to deal with that, that particular animal, you know, in a more lenient way, you know, because she's young. But, and I suppose it's just, you know, if if that particular cow is certainly, you know, maybe five lactations plus, you know, the high, you know, the the the, the animal with, with with a high SCC, certainly, you know, you know, they should be called. And the you know, the amount of damage that those particular cows uh, uh, play in the herd is is massive, uh, Emily. And and I guess if if we think about milk recording on a practical level, you would have recommended that that early milk recording is done within sixty days of the first cow calving. And a lot of people are in the scenario where the predicted start of calving is the 1st of February, but they will have cows that have calved from the middle of January. So, you know, while we would have always talked about uh, the 1st of February, so you're looking at the 1st of April and, and pulling it actually back towards maybe St. Patrick's Day, you know, should those farmers be going earlier? Absolutely. If you want, if if you want to get those animals uh, within the sixty days, Emma Louise, you're going to have to start earlier. You know, and I think the benefits accrued by doing that early milk recording are massive in terms of particularly uh, assessing, you know, assessing the dry cow period. And, and I suppose the other thing is that if you have problem cows, you're actually, you know, you're identifying those cows earlier. You you and if you act on those cows in terms of maybe taking them out of the system or not milking them with the main herd, you're really cutting down at that level of cross infection. So it's it's really, really important. I think it's money, money really well spent, you know, in terms of, you know, identifying those cows to prevent that cross infection. I think it's 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 a massive one for me. And could you recommend a number of times that dairy farmers would milk record in the year or should milk record in the year and what that would look like across the annual calendar? That's a good point. I suppose, look, at if somebody was starting off milk recording this year, for example, I would say, you know, maybe if they got four milk recordings done, we'd be doing a, a, a good job because of the fact they're just starting off. However, I would say that in year two, you're talking about at least six milk recordings in the year, you know, because to capture, you know, to capture the, the, the what's happening in the herd, I think really you need six. So I suppose maybe just to expand on that a little bit, you're talking about maybe doing your first milk recording uh, around St. Patrick's Day, as you say, if you're talking about maybe start, starting the calf on the 1st of February. And I suppose really, Emma Louise, it's, it's, you're talking about maybe every two months after that. So maybe one in mid-March, one in mid-May, one in mid-July, one in mid-September, 
one in, in mid-October and another one maybe in, in, in around November period. And I suppose the two important ones would be, you know, the one at the start of the season. And I suppose, as, as, as we outlined already, and I suppose the second one is, you know, uh, coming up to dry off period, a dry off time. So, so I suppose what you want to capture there is, you know, is there any of the cows infected, you know, uh, at, at dry off? So, as, you know, you have to distinguish, you know, are you going to give them a, a, a dry cow tubes, antibiotic tubes, or just teeth sealer only? So I suppose that's the that's that's why it's the the. the the last one is so important there. In the and at the outset, one of the reasons you suggested that completing a milk recording early will assess how well a farmer has um, done during the dry period. Was it a success or, you know, is there room for improvement? Um, you also mentioned that, you know, you, you can assess that from the, the cell check report. What exactly, you know, are the, the, I suppose, the traits or KPIs within the cell check report in relation to the dry period? There's three elements in, 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 this, in this part of that report. And the first one is uh, the new infection rate over the dry cow period. And I suppose the target here is less than 10%. So what do I mean by that? So it's any cows, you know, that were under 200,000 for the last milk recording last year um, um, and that are over 200,000 uh, in the first milk recording this year. So that figure should be less than 10%. So in other words, you know, if, if, if it's more than that, you know, something has happened during the dry cow period. Was it, you know, your dry cow protocol? Uh, was it, you know, something got to do with the facility, facilities? Yeah, or, or maybe, the, you know, did something happen? Maybe was the calving box area clean enough? You know, so I suppose that's, that's the first one. So, so uh, the, the target there is, is, is less than 10%. The second part of uh, the second element here is uh, the new infection rate um, of heifers. Uh, uh, um, you know, so in other words, how many heifers have calved down? You know, with cell counts over two hundred thousand, and, and and that target should be less than fifteen percent. And again, I would I would be saying to farmers is you know have a have a look at this particular figure, and if there's an issue there, it should be looked at. You know, what, what is the is the heifer accommodation? Is it is it good enough? Were the cubicles kept clean enough? Uh, um, you know where did where were those heifers calved? Was, was you know was was that was was that okay? And I suppose the last part, the, the third element to this would be uh, the cure rate over the dry period. And again, I suppose you know what do I mean by that? What what this is is any cows that were over two hundred thousand in the last milk recording, you know, and that are and that are less than two hundred thousand. In the in the in the in the, the milk recording for this year, you know, so that target should be eighty five percent. So in other words, are eighty five percent or more? You know, that the higher that figure is, the better it is. Because in other words, you know, you know, it it, it showed that I suppose that the antibiotic that you used uh, to, to to for that particular cow because she was over two hundred thousand, you know, worked, and you you had a good you had a good um, a, a protocol in place as well in terms of of the whole dry cow. Uh, 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 dry cow infusing the tubes it's it's incredible how many elements can add to um success and failure of the dry cow period i mean there, there's a whole lot going on from um identifying the right cows for um that require an antibiotic um you know good administration of the antibiotic tube and the sealer um you know all of the management over those two months of a dry period that cows go through um you know that that culminate in the figures that you mentioned in terms of cure rate and, and infection rates um over that time this has been a hugely insightful um conversation podrick and i think you've given us many proactive steps to identify and manage cell count um, in early lactation and um, a good start um, makes the the whole lactation easier and I think one key point that you made while average cell count might look good people really need to look under the bonnet and look at individual cows to ensure there isn't a problem brewing that is going to rise and become a bigger issue further into lactation. Thank you Podrick. Thanks Emma Louise. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Padre O'Connor for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. 
you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.